Hello and welcome. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace, from God our Father, and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God for our consideration today is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We ask, Lord, as we open the Scriptures today, that you would open our hearts, that we would receive the Word with joy, and that your word would spring forth fruit in our lives. We ask your blessing in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. My beloved friends in the Lord, a few weeks ago, together with our daughter Krista and her husband Alex, we drove out to Leppington to a dog breeder to look at puppies. They decided that they would like to get a puppy. On the way out there, Krista asked me, how will we know which one is the right one for us? The breeder had two litters. There were plenty of puppies to choose from. And I said to her, I think you'll know. And the dog will know and you will know. And as it turns out, it wasn't too hard to choose at all. It became fairly clear which one was going to be the new member of our family. As I reflected upon the wonderful afternoon that we had, I remember a story that I read many years ago about a young boy who lived out in the country who also wanted to get a puppy. A local farmer advertised that he had puppies for sale and so the boy went along to have a look. The farmer said, I'll let them out and you can choose one for yourself. He let out a number of puppies. They ran up to the fence, eager to see the boy. And finally, the runt of the litter came out. He was smaller than the rest and he was a little bit lame in one of his feet. The boy said, that's the one that I want. The farmer looked at him and said, son, no, you don't want that one. He's lame. He'll never be able to run very fast or chase a ball or do any of those things. Choose one of the other ones. The boy smiled and said, no, I want him. And then he rolled up his trouser leg to reveal that he had a prosthesis. He was born with the greater part of one of his legs missing. And he said to the farmer, you see, that puppy needs somebody who will understand. The boy had understanding. He had compassion on this little puppy who was lame. And he felt that this would be the best fit for him because they understood each other. Only one who is lame can really understand how someone else who is lame feels. And that brings us to our text today. Paul says two things about suffering. He says that there is one who helps us, who can help us in a way that no one else can, and that is one who has himself suffered. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received. The one who himself has experienced trouble is much more able to comfort someone else who's going through difficulties. 
Paul calls God the God of all comfort, the one who comforts us in all of our troubles. In order to really understand what he's talking about, we need to go back to the original Greek language. And we find that the word he uses here is paraklesos, which means to comfort. Paraklesos is the same root word that the word parakletos comes from. And as we know, parakletos is one of the names given to the Holy Spirit. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the Parakletos, which means defender, one who comes alongside, advocate, helper. But I really like the definition, the one who comes alongside. God is the one who comforts us, who comes alongside of us when we are in trouble. He's the one who is with us as we go through difficulties and trials in life. David wrote so beautifully in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, or as some translations say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. You come alongside me, you comfort me, your rod and your staff, your shepherd's equipment reminds me that I have a good shepherd who is always alongside with me. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. No matter what happens, no matter what trials we have to go through, we have the good shepherd who is always by our side, who is always with us. In fact, he is not only alongside of us, but he lives in our hearts through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God, the Bible, is the rod and the staff. And Jesus is able to comfort us in a way that no one else can. He's not a God who is far away. But he is a God who comes right alongside of us. He is a God who understands. He understands how we feel. Because he was once a human. He lived in human flesh. We read in the book of Hebrews, Therefore, since we have such a great high priest, who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. We have a high priest who is no stranger to suffering, who himself has experienced every form of temptation. The only difference between him and us is that he never gave in to temptation. But Jesus was tempted, he was abused, he was beaten. He suffered more than anyone. And so he understands pain. He understands suffering. And he is able to emphasize with us. Empathize with us. How wonderful that is. I find these words very comforting. And we are told that we are able to approach the throne of grace. The throne of grace. With what? With fear and trembling? No, with confidence. Let us then approach, approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive what? Mercy and find grace in our time of need. How wonderful is that? We have a throne of grace that we, because of what Jesus did for us, can approach with confidence and know that we will not be rejected. Know that we will find mercy and grace and help in our time of need, whatever that need may be. You see, our God is a God of grace, a God of kindness and mercy. Not only is he wanting to help us, he is able 
to help us. There is nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing that he does not understand. There is no situation that we find ourselves in that God has not got a solution for. Nothing surprises him. He is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. And he is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere. How wonderful is that? Since we have such a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we come to him, he comforts us. He comes alongside and he eases the burden. So we have one to whom we can turn. One who understands, who can comfort us in all of our trials and difficulties. And the second thing from our text is, that when we have received this comfort and this help from God, then we ought to be in a position where we can help and comfort others. Remember the boy in our story? He wanted the puppy that was lame because he said the puppy is going to need somebody who understands. And he said, I understand. We don't have to look very far at all to find somebody who needs somebody to listen, to care, who understands. We don't have to look far to find somebody who needs a parakletos, somebody who can come along and provide comfort, provide a listening ear. And a helping hand. Please understand that everything that happens happens within God's wisdom and knowledge. If we have experienced some sort of trial, some sort of difficulty, some sort of pain, be it sickness, be it trauma, be it whatever, then we are often in a better position to help somebody who's experiencing a similar thing. I want this word to really sink deeply into our hearts, so let me read it again. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we may comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. That's the whole point. God so needs people like you and me who do not just keep everything to ourselves but who share, who give, and who help. May we be amongst those that spread God's love and kindness and compassion and comfort to those who need it. May we be the one who comes alongside a person who's suffering, who listens, who brings comfort, who gives hope and a blessing from God. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't know if I am that sort of person. I don't even know what to say. You know, very often it's best not to say anything. 
Sometimes the best thing to do is just sit and listen. Hold the person's hand. Weep with them. Just be there. And trust in God and He will give you the right words to say if there are words that need to be said. You see, God will speak through you. He will use you if you allow Him. You can bring comfort by bringing God's Word. One of the greatest Psalms is Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. Another great Psalm, Psalm 121, which reminds us that God never slumbers or sleeps. He is always awake. These are two Psalms I keep in my toolkit, so to speak, that I know off by heart, that I have ready to be able to share with people and just to bring them God's Word. The Lord is my shepherd. And also the reminder that God never slumbers or sleeps. That He is always awake, always watching. That can bring great comfort and peace to a person who's in trouble. So may God help us to be loving, to be kind, to be understanding. If we ourselves are in need of comfort, we can turn to Him at any time, approach His throne with confidence, receive the grace, mercy and help in our time of need. And in having received, may we also be amongst those who share this blessing of God, this peace with other people. May God help us. Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you today for your word. We thank you that you are the God of all comfort. We thank you that you are the God of peace and joy. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our great high priest who understands us in our weakness. You understand everything about us and you love us. We thank you that we can say along with David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have made that possible for each one of us. Thank you that you died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And thank you, Heavenly Father, that you didn't leave Jesus in the grave, but that you raised him up on the third day. And he now has the power, all power, all authority in heaven and on earth. So we commit our lives in you to you today and ask your blessing. We ask your blessing over this day. We ask your blessing, Lord, over our loved ones near and far. We ask your blessing over the Christian church. We pray that you would cleanse her, renew her. We ask, Lord, that you would be with those who are suffering and especially those who are suffering for their faith. We pray for those that are persecuted. We pray, Lord, that you would just strengthen them and help them and forgive those who persecute them for they don't know what they're doing. Heavenly Father, we pray for the sick, the dying, and all who are in need. We pray for the soul that doesn't know you yet, that today would be the day they open their hearts to you. We pray for those who are suffering in places of war like the Ukraine and other countries where there's strife and unrest. We pray for those who are depressed. We pray for those who, Lord, just don't see much meaning in life. Would you come to them? We pray, Lord, that you would... Be with our governments and all in authority that you would help them to make good and right decisions in these very turbulent and difficult times. There's so many things that we could pray, but we just want to take this opportunity once again to thank you, to bless, praise and worship you. And we combine our prayers by praying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. God be with you till we meet again.